Hundreds of millions of AMD CPUs are affected by a new security flaw. This discrete NVIDIA GPU gets stomped by AMD's new APU, 48GB of memory on an RTX 4090, and NVIDIA's new consumer CPU. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. This video is sponsored by Ugreen. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, AMD is a pretty major issue. As you can see right here, there was a recently discovered major security vulnerability that affects virtually all of AMD's processors released since 2006. Just for reference, according to reports, we're talking hundreds of millions of processors are affected. As you can see right here, this new vulnerability is called Saint Close. And basically what it does is it allows hackers to execute code within the system management mode of AMD's processors, a highly privileged area typically reserved for critical firmware operations. Now, this next part is where people sort of take issue and try and say that this really isn't that big of a deal, but it sort of is, though not for everyone. I'll just let me get into this. Basically, as you can see, it says to exploit this flaw, attackers must first gain access to a system's kernel. So yeah, to do this, you ultimately have to have some pretty intense restricted access. But as the people who actually discovered this exploit say, you can see uh, both of them say that, quote, people have kernel exploits right now for all of these systems. They exist and they're available for attackers. This is the next step. Now, the reason this is such a big deal, even AMD themselves say the severity is high. And the reason being is because you can see right here, it says once this access is secured, the sync close vulnerability allows the perpetrators to install bootkit malware that evades detection by standard antivirus tools remaining nearly invisible within the system and can persist even after the operating system is reinstalled. And in fact, it gets even worse because you can see here that the issue is so severe that in some cases it may be easier to abandon an infected machine than to repair it, reports Wired. Basically, this is so hard to remove that in a lot of cases, it's easier to just take the system and toss it in the trash. With that said, at least in my opinion, obviously don't take this if this were to happen to you and then blame me for you not doing anything about it. But for the most part, I would argue that the average person really doesn't have anything to worry about. This is a pretty major thing that you have to do to get in there to do all of this. The only place where I could really see this being a major issue would be some type of uh, over the air update or something like that that goes out that does have access to the kernel and someone adds malware to it that utilizes this vulnerability, then you could have a major issue on your hands. But for the most part, like I said, I don't really see this being a major issue for the average user. With that said, one last little thing that I want to point out is that while a lot of these already actually have patches that are out, AMD apparently isn't going to be patching everything. You can see right here that AMD is not listed Ryzen and Threadripper 1000 and 2000 and other previously released products as impacted by the vulnerability. You can see right here, AMD says some chips fall outside of the software support window. So they're basically claiming that, yeah, software support unfortunately has ended for this CPU, so we're not going to patch it. But I can definitely understand the argument of this is a vulnerability that is inherent in your CPU. You should definitely patch it. Then you could sort of argue that a lot of the software support updates are issues like this. So I'm not really sure where on the fence I am, but just know that if you're on 1000 or 2000 and actually I will say even 3000. Yeah, right down here you can see Ryzen 3000. It says no fix planned. Either way, if you do have any of the other CPUs that AMD currently does support with these updates, make sure that you do update your system when they become available. This is Apple's 20 watt fast charger, and this is the 100 watt Nexode Pro from Ugreen. You can see it's just a little bigger, 
but this provides five times the output to a single port. That's enough to charge a 14 inch MacBook Pro from zero to 50% in just 27 minutes. And as you can see, it literally takes up just one wall outlet, so you still have room to plug anything else in. Plus, unlike Apple's charger, which only has one port, this one can fast charge three devices all at once. Not to mention the fact that it has overheating, overcharging, and excess current protection, along with a ton of charging protocols like power delivery. And that one specifically is great because I can use this tiny thing to charge my camera while I'm using it. I can't do that with just any USB charger. Basically, it's got anything and everything you could want in a super tiny package. I love it, and I know you will too. So get yours now and save up to 50% by visiting the link in the description below. And next up for today, we have some brand new benchmarks on AMD's new APUs, specifically the iGPU that comes in them, the RDNA 3.5 based iGPU, the Radeon 890M. This time, we actually have benchmarks from Tech Epiphany comparing the Radeon 890M to the GTX 1650. So don't forget that this is an integrated GPU versus NVIDIA's discrete card. And yes, this isn't exactly the fastest GPU out there. It wasn't even all that fast when it was released a few years ago. But once again, we're talking integrated graphics. And as you can see right here, we're going to kind of go through these. Forza Horizon 5, we're looking at upwards of 81 FPS versus 58. So a complete massacre here. Then moving over to Cyberpunk 2077, this is 1080p low. You can see we're talking 42 FPS versus 33. So once again, very big difference here. Then we have 50 FPS versus 27. We're talking nearly double the FPS. And finally, and that one was the new Robocop game. And then finally, the first descent. This one is pretty much neck and neck, 79 FPS versus 75, but basically all in all with all of these, it was an absolute blowout. And next up, we have a pretty wild story here, specifically because the 4090, well, more specifically the 4090D, this is of course the China-centric 4090D, as it says here, designed to circumvent US export restrictions of the 8102 gaming GPU. Well, it's now available with double the memory, bringing it to 48 gigabytes. This information, as you can see, was first reported by this user on Twitter, who actually accessed a cloud computing platform where there were instances of this GPU already being used, already installed. You can use it, you can rent it. You can see right here, there's actually, so for one, there's actually a 4080 Super with double its memory, as well as right here, the 4090D with once again, we're talking 48 gigabytes of memory. Now, I will say that while, yeah, you could technically game with these, you can do pretty much anything, the primary purpose of them is for, you can see, training large language models as well as other generative AI models, so just AI in general. And basically how they did this, they modified, from what I can understand, they took regular 4090Ds and then modified them to have all of this memory, but, the interesting part about this is that you can see here, memory modifications like these are not uncommon, especially within the modding community, but the fact that a cloud computing platform actually offers instances of such modified graphics cards suggests a large scale supply, as well as use of custom board designs. Basically, this is not some small operation. This is a really big deal, unfortunately though, Given the fact that they are in China, it would be really hard to secure one of these GPUs, but I will say that it would be really interesting to see what all you could do with that much memory. I don't know, add a ton of mods or something like that, wild texture mods. It would be pretty cool. And lastly for today, if you've been following the channel, and of course if you haven't, make sure you subscribe to GamerMeld to keep up with all the latest PC hardware news. But if you have, you know that I've talked a little bit about this upcoming consumer CPU from NVIDIA. Well, it looks like it's getting closer and closer to launch. If you don't know what I'm talking about, multiple reports have claimed that NVIDIA is teaming up with MediaTek to make an AI PC chip. Now, if you hear that, you might think, oh, well, that's not for consumers. That's for huge companies who are making AI and stuff like that. 
But don't forget, that's basically what it's going to be called now. PCs just in general, they're now calling them AI PCs. Don't forget, Microsoft was a big part of that. This is the big new PC revolution, a huge deal. And you can even see it right here targeting Intel, AMD, and Qualcomm's SoCs. Meaning NVIDIA is actually working on what AMD would call an APU. So we're talking this should not only have AI performance, but it will likely also include an iGPU. So NVIDIA may finally be joining the race against Intel and AMD. And of course, given their GPU tech, they really could come in and just stomp everyone. I wouldn't really expect that or anything, but still, this is a really exciting development. And as you can see right here, according to this report, it's now expected to launch by the first half of next year. So while that does it for today, are you excited for a potential NVIDIA consumer CPU? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the 100 watt Nexode Pro Charger down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.